Okay, this is Zach. Um, I look a little different today. I don't know. Maybe the fat's actually starting to shrink a little bit more and the skin's falling back to it, but I don't know why. Um, go ahead and talk about what we're going to talk about right now is deep freeze. Um, I'm going to show if you need to purchase it or not is up to you, but it's going to be based on what my experience is of using it and having it. Um, so we're going to get right into this video. Um, to explain in depth what deep freeze does, I cannot tell you exactly because I really don't know. Um, I think some things that are hidden with deep freeze because they don't want you to know how it necessarily works other than the best way I'll be able to show you today. So let's go ahead and get right to that. Um, here's that computer again and we've got it up and on the uh, Windows Task Manager is what I have. You can get this by pushing Alt, Control, Delete all together and it will bring up your Windows Task Manager. Now this is for PC. If you have a Mac, I'm sorry, I can't help you in that situation because I, I haven't touched Macs for so long. Um, the best I can say is you're just gonna have to follow basically what I'm saying and then uh, see for yourself. If you know how to use your Mac, you should know how to do this. So. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm going to the system idle process. Now the system idle process should show up right on the screen after you click the processes tab. When you, when you first get into Windows Task Manager, it should be under the applications tab. But you go to processes tab and right there at the bottom is the system idle process. Now the system idle process um, it should be between 90 to 99 almost always if you have nothing installed, nothing malicious. Um, right now the computer runs at between 94 and 99. Now there is nothing running if there's nothing running that will be that case. Now if you don't see anything running and you know that there shouldn't be anything running and you see it going uh, anywhere between 80 percent and down you have an investigation to do my friend because viruses hide maliciously in your computer and this is kind of back to when I said I could tell you why having virus scanning software Basically, I can put them out of business saying that it just doesn't work. It plainly doesn't work um, because you can't find that crap. You just can't. And so we could have it on here, and the way we'll know is there's nothing that's supposed to be running. You check your <clears throat> excuse me here. You check your processes, and you go through the list of the um, image names, and you check to see their CPU usage. Now, if, if for whatever reason you see something high, you usually just disable that. You click on it, hit in process. But sometimes it's hidden. If it's hidden, it's malicious. So that's one way to know right away that you've got something messed up on your computer. And more than likely, you should just go ahead and purchase Deep Freeze because you're probably going to say, well, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and erase my computer. If you know how to do that, then that would be a good time to purchase Deep Freeze. Um, if your computer is already running at this kind of idle uh, process and you open up an Internet Explorer or something and it takes 10 to 15 percent of it away, that's perfectly normal. But if you're doing nothing and the process doesn't go back down, then obviously you can erase your computer and get that process speed back. Um, that's the main determination between if you need it or not. Uh, I shouldn't say determination. That's determining if you need it or not. Um, the computer, I would not install Deep Freeze if it's already got junk on it and you're not going to erase it. Um, you are better off to erase it, get your process speed back, and then go ahead and install Deep Freeze. Otherwise, it's almost pointless for me to say, go buy Deep Freeze and install it because your computer is going to stay the same way it is right now. Um, Deep Freeze is good to have off the beginning. If you completely com clean out your computer, start fresh, and I mean fresh by not just deleting, I mean erasing and reinstalling your operating system, and then install Deep Freeze. The benefits to this is there's absolutely nothing on your computer um, that's going to run your your uh, process down so your computer stays very fast and that's the whole point. Um, 
So again, if the computer already runs really bad and you want to think about getting deep freeze, that's a different story. It's not going to do anything for you in the much of that case. Um, so what we do here is my computer, as you see here, I keep saying my computer when it's not really mine, but it's possession like in the house. So um, this computer, it's at between, I said, 94 and 99 um, on the, uh, excuse me, the CPU usage. So for that means, since if I didn't have Deep Freeze installed, I could go ahead and get it. Now, if I was going to get Deep Freeze, you definitely want to remove your antivirus, anything else that is just buggingly going to take all your speed and whatsoever. There's no point in having that stuff. Once you get Deep Freeze, there's really almost 0% reason to have that stuff. Um, in my life, I never even order Norton or any of those other ones because I just know they don't work and I can keep saying this and I keep saying this. And I can even say why they don't work and show all that proof. But um, going on down on this, so let's say we're going to go ahead and purchase Deep Freeze. And uh, how do we do this? I mean, how, how does it work? Excuse me. The best that I can show, again, is to the computer. So we have Deep Freeze down here in the bottom right. And the best advice, if you are buying Deep Freeze, do not, do not use Deep Freeze to set up the partition. Now, I know this in the past. I don't know if this is brand new, if they've done it with the Windows 7 version or anything like that. But in the past, if you use the partition ability, you will not be able to get your information back on your hard drive if the computer crashes. So if your C drive goes out and you can't see the fake partition is what it is. It's a fake partition, so you won't be able to get your data back. Um, that I know of, there may be a way to do that, but I didn't attempt because it was so long ago and I wouldn't even want to go through all the crud. Um, it's just not worth it. It's a fake partition. That's pretty much all you need to know. So I say partition it correctly. Now, if you just have one hard drive, that's going to be your C drive more likely with Windows. You could buy multiple hard drives, or you could <coughs> use one hard drive and partition it. Now, what I usually do is I take one hard drive, partition it for 10 gigabytes for the Windows. You really don't need more than 10 gigabytes because everything that you're going to install is going to go to your extra drives, your D drive, your E drive, whatever you have. Um, so once you partition those two, you format them, and if you had to erase them, please use the erasing software. Um, I'm just trying to remember the kind that I use. I cannot remember, but just look up erasing hard drives, uh, killing boot sectors. Um, so Otherwise, if you're pretty sure there's nothing on that hard drive, you don't even have to worry about erasing. You can just format. The erasing is just a for sure way. If there, if you got something on your computer and you really just want to make sure, oh, it's called Kill Disk. I remember now. Kill Disk is the uh, <clears throat> erasing software. Now, just go ahead and get that out of there. So we've got a hard drive and we partition it. And why are we partitioning it? Because we're going to freeze the C drive, the Windows drive. Now the point of that is that once we freeze that drive, if you get viruses on it or whatever else happens, someone comes in and deletes it, whatever, you can just turn it off and turn it back on. And at the same time, the D and E or whatever so drives that you have, um, you can save your stuff. You couldn't save your stuff on the C drive, your Windows. So if I try to do something on the desktop here and save it on the desktop, it won't save. Now that's the reason why when you look at the desktop, there isn't much of anything on the desktop. It's real organized. Um, most people have shit all over their screen and whatnot. Uh, so when we go in this computer, we have a C and a D drive. And that's all there is. 10 gigabytes for the Windows. And for the rest, on the D drive. Now the C drive is the only one that's going to be frozen. The D drive is not. Any of the other stuff is not going to be frozen. Um, so here's a little bit of how the deep freeze works. Um, right now it's enabled, but if we turn it off and we, it's called thaw mode. If we thaw it, we have to restart. It's going to come up with a message, would you like to restart? 
hit yes, and the computer will restart. Now, when the computer comes back on, it's going to be, this is very, getting a little bit more complex. Try not, I'll try not to lose you here. The last time I probably locked that down was about eight years ago. Like I said, I haven't touched. Now, someone else has probably locked it down since then because of Internet Explorer 8. So what that means is it's going to go to the last time that it was locked down. So whenever that was, to the next restart. Um, so it could have been years ago. I don't know when Internet Explorer 8 came out. Um, probably within the last couple of years. Now, so uh, it's always hard to explain this, but whoever touched it last, whoever locked it last, it's almost like they would have just hit the reset button and it would have been the, the next screen, the next time they load up. That's what it would be like. Um, basically, it's like what you see right now, locked, is the next time. Yeah, this, yeah, this is where it gets a little, it's hard to, sometimes it's hard to get the customers into this because the way Deep Freeze works, it sometimes locks down your time and blah, blah, blah. Your time doesn't work at the bottom. And, Basically, there's so many benefits over just one little bad thing that I don't even see why there's complaining. Um, so you have to turn off the deep freeze. It's going to restart. It's going to go back to that last time. And then you can permanently undo your installing and whatnot. So we would go ahead and boot thawed. It will ask us to restart. We'll do that. And then when we get to um, installing whatever we want to, anything over the Internet, whatever, um, then we go ahead and we go back to the bottom and we lock it down. And once we lock it down, we have to restart again. <clears throat> so uh, that's the whole process of getting something to stay there. Um, if we want to keep stuff, if we want to save stuff to the computer, which would be on a different drive, it's just as easily as going into a document and typing up something and then go to File, Save As, choose your different drive, your D or E, whatever, so forth and hit save and so all your stuff in your D drive will be saved um, everything in the C drive whenever you need to do an update you're gonna have to thaw and do your update and then unthaw back to frozen excuse me so what what really goes on is there's usually not a lot of updating because people just why do you want to keep updating windows it's not even worth it I'm telling you SP3 pff, you got to be more kidding me because there are other things that come in problems when SP2 was honestly had some better things even though it has security problems. Um, let's get over that, but I can talk all day about that crap. Um, so basically, if you want your computer to stay fast and you just got it brand new, you'd have to erase it. You would have to install the operating system, the drivers, and then deep freeze. Um, you set deep freeze up for your Windows. Um, I, like I said, I suggested 10 for Windows, and only install the stuff necessary to Windows on your C drive. So um, that would be anything that has to do with software that's very necessary. Um, maybe stuff for DVD that you want to watch your DVD movies, and so that software is necessary on the C drive. Um, Photoshop, all that other kind of stuff is necessary on the C drive. Usually video games, um, sometimes for D drive, it depends. Now, the, the, a lot of the newer games, they are a pain in the ass because you can install them on a C drive or D drive, it doesn't matter, and they will keep their information hidden on the C drive. So then you have problems with that working, and basically what I've done, because I'm, I'm also a programmer with Visual Basic 6, I created a program that automatically it knows where those folders that change and grabs that information and moves it and saves it automatically for me. So I can play all my games um, without having an issue. Now someone else, they're going to buy that brand new game, they're going to get on their computer and it's going to save it on C drive under a documents hidden folder somewhere and they're going to have to every time go and find it and then save it. So it's probably hidden at the same time. Um, but other than that, that's basically deep freeze is if, if anybody's messing with computers, anyone's deleting or anything, I just restart it and it's back to where I left it frozen. Um, I hope I didn't 
make this too complicated. Sometimes I go too fast, too rambling because I'm trying to get all the information out there. Um, from the last time I've used Deep Freeze with the deleting of um, stuff and, and putting in stuff, um, excuse me, putting in stuff, not deleting. When you take a, a good example is when you have your 10, capac 10 gigs capacity hard drive and you install Windows and all your stuff, it's up to 4 gigs. And it says 6 gigs is uh, free of storage space. However, I've noticed that if you try to fill those 6 gigs of storage space, it will start crashing or it will slow down the computer because you don't have the room for it. I'm not 100% sure, but in my belief, I think that Deep Freeze makes a physical copy of itself, the uh, the C drive, excuse me, of Windows on the C drive. So what happens is, take 10 gigs capacity minus 4 gigs capacity of Windows minus another 4 gigs capacity. So you're only left with two. Um, I don't know if that still is going on now, but that's what has happened with all these computers because I know that from installing and doing all the and putting stuff on it. So over the years. Sometimes I choose between 10 and 20 gigs for C drive, but more than likely I don't see anyone using 6 gigabytes of storage space for your C drive. Who uses for a C drive? Nobody. I have 6 hard drives on my supercomputer over there, and no, I don't use anything other than 2 gigs or more for Windows. That's just it. Um, so basically, I think, I hope I... I think I hope I <laughs> put that all out there. Um, so everything on C drive is locked down. I can do whatever I want, delete and reset, and it's still there. So um, the only things that would make it look like something had happened is hardware. Um, so for instance, when I turn the computer off from the back and it turns off and comes back on, um, usually, like I said, Windows users, they want to either hold down the button so it, only for a second so that Windows can say, well, I'm going to be shutting down or go to start and shut down. Now, for me, I can just hold that, push that button off in the back because I have Deep Freeze installed. With Deep Freeze installed, this is another benefit, is that the hard drive doesn't have, um, <clears throat> doesn't have corruption in it. What that means is it's not doing stuff on Windows writing on that disk as I flip that switch off. So if I didn't have Deep Freeze installed, if I did that for three years switching that switch off, the possibility is I could definitely have corruption somewhere in the hard drive and maybe have to reinstall Windows. Now again, there are other benefits. We can also do installing video games, programs, check to see if they have viruses. I mean, we could do this, 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 testing, and do this while the computer is frozen. Um, that way we know that if something is maliciously uh, uh, excuse me, on the computer before we do it on a thaw mode, then we won't have to worry about, oh, I installed it, I can't remove it. Because Windows does not remove very well, and we also know Windows doesn't go backwards. Um, it does have the ability to restore, but it doesn't do a 100% restore. I'm telling you, it does not. And many people will honestly believe that once they see what you install something and you restore, and there's something wrong sometimes. Viruses still don't get removed. Um, so don't think that doing a restore on Windows is going to save your ass. Deep Freeze will save your ass. In most cases of anything that I've ever had a problem with deep freeze was there. Um, okay, so complications. Let's talk about complications here. Um, in deep freeze's earlier phases, I had problems where I would install deep freeze and as soon as I got into Windows, it would just reboot. Now this was based on the motherboard type, um, the chipset. And I don't know if since then they fixed it I assume so because I used to have Windows um, XP version with, excuse me, Windows Vista version, but I didn't like Vista whatsoever, so I got away from that quickly. Um, 
So I don't know if that issue still arises, but once you've got the computer working, I've never seen it come back. Um, this is very rare occasions. It was an NVIDIA board that I know of, and it was stated in some articles, so we kind of know that that was there. Um, that was back then. Now you buy, it may be a totally different store where there's not even a freaking bug on it. Um, so other complications of installing software that has to require you to restart. Uh, usually you can't test that. You'd have to just um, turn off the or turn off the freeze mode and go into thaw and just go ahead and install it anyways. And other complications being if you need something like a Java update, um, anything Adobe or anything like that, you're going to have to unthaw, you're going to have to install it, and you're going to have to hope basically that those places haven't been hacked because we do know hackers can get that type, of those types of servers, and they can make you update your stuff. Even Windows had this problem. Windows users were having their stuff hacked because Windows got hacked. And so I can go on and on about this crap, but um, so that's basically all that I can think off of the top of my head. The program does everything instantly. When you're installing Deep Freeze, it does it instantly. It unless it has to partition, fake partition something, but don't do that. Um, also allow in the settings to change the time clock. Now the time clock, um, it usually what happens, this is kind of, I, earlier I just kind of ranted real quickly, I didn't explain. The time will change and somewhere in the world, you know, time comes, it has to change. We go an hour back, an hour forward. Um, the computer will try to automatically adjust but with deep freeze installed it didn't learn to so it'll go an hour back an hour back an hour back and yes you can just guess the time will not be correct until you turn off the frozen mode going back into thaw fixing your time clock and then freezing it um, most cases we don't care. Most of my people that I help out clients wise don't care. Um, but I do explain to them that, you know, that's just what you have to do. You're going to have to thought. Now, the newer versions of Deep Freeze, I don't know. It could be the fact of it automatically changes the clock right. I do not know. Um, but I definitely, very soon, I'm going to be purchasing Deep Freeze for Windows 7 because my sister has a Windows 7 laptop which I totally kind of suggested you don't want to have because Windows 7 even though it's nice runs down your computer it's a new operating system on a computer that barely handles it called a laptop so yes unless you're going to spend thousands of dollars but which who who spends thousands of dollars on laptops are usually people with money and people that are dumb yeah um, because that stuff it doesn't last and it in just about a few years you've already lost a hundred percent of your bot laptop just not it's not worth it um, okay so I guess that's pretty much it <sighs> I guess I pretty much laid it out there um, that I can think of again the C drive is the only thing that needs to have deep freeze running frozen um, and if I could think of anything else, I would have said it by now. So there's nothing else to think of. And I hope this kind of put this out there, what Deep Freeze is useful for, um, why you would probably need it, and how you would use it. Um, to access it in the bottom right-hand corner, you have to hold the Shift key and double-click. Uh, most people get confused by this, and they sometimes don't remember or... Um, they lock themselves out but basically in the bottom right hand corner you'll see a little freeze box or something similar it could be a panda bear it depends on what version you have and holding shift and double clicking allows you to set up your password oh always set up a password if you install without setting up a password you can lock yourself out of the system and what this means is you'll have to erase the system and start all over again um, you do not want to lock yourself out. So it, definitely make sure you set up a password and do not forget it because if you forget it, you ain't getting in. 
Uh, that's basically it. You're just going to be stuck on your computer like this all the time. You can still use it, but you're just going to have to erase or something similar to that. Um, I think that pretty much puts that there. So you have your password. Uh, you'd enter it in and hit enter, and you have a file or frozen mode, and you get to select. And then they even have the ability to choose how many times to stay thaw. But I really don't pick that. Um, settings that I put on the computer for Windows, I always tell it not to update um, the antivirus and the firewall stuff. Firewall stuff, I usually turn it off because I have firewalls in my <coughs> routers, in my LAN, LAN stuff, which is the, oh, excuse me, the routers and the cable modem. I use a hardware internal firewalls. Um, usually software I've used in the past with zone alarm and stuff, but ever since I've gotten deep freeze, I have not had to go through that route. Um, people that get my IP address, I just quickly change it, so there's no problem there. Um, but deep freeze has saved me in so many ways, uh, and it saves so many other people, and so many other people come to me so happy, so so joyful because again, this is something that is the next level and not everyone can take it. Not everyone can remember in their mind. Can I remember to save a document on the next hard drive? Because if I don't remember and I just leave it on the desktop, it doesn't get saved um, when the drive is frozen. So uh, hopefully that's everything now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and leave it off for that. And then if you have any more questions, comments about Deep Freeze, just go ahead and post to me. Um, thanks for watching this video. I'm sorry it's very long. This is actually one of my longer videos where I'm talking really quick and saying things. And hopefully I made sense and not a lot of complex things. I don't like to use big words because then it gets really troublesome where I have to explain even better. Okay, so we're done for now. You guys have a nice night.